Welcome and hello. Today's topic is fentanyl in the United States. Stick around and we'll go over a few main topics. What is fentanyl, how it kills, where it's coming from, and what might we do about it? So let's dive into this joyous topic. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid, 50 times more potent than heroin. That's the Mike Tyson of drugs for those keeping score. It's also incredibly modular, and by that I mean you can modify the drug to make what are called analogs, which are stronger or weaker versions of the same drug. In medicine, opioids are used as painkillers, but they can also be easily lethal when it comes to overdoses. The way most of these deaths occur is if too much is taken, which is hard to monitor outside of a medical situation, let alone in one, it can lead to dramatic decreases in your ability to breathe. This happens because opioids suppress a natural response in your brain of increasing breathing when CO2 increases in your blood, and then that person essentially asphyxiates and dies because there's too much CO2 in them. Fentanyl is so lethal that doses as small as 2 milligrams can kill. And if it's mixed with other drugs or made to be stronger, as mentioned above, we can make this even deadlier, which is bad news. Fentanyl has been around since 1959, which makes none of these things new problems. But even if you wait to start tracking till the year 2000, only 730 people died from synthetic opioid overdoses, according to the CDC that year. Quickly, that number has started to rise and rise fast, even outpacing other opioid related deaths, such as from heroin or other prescription overdoses. By 2021, that number has risen to over 70,000 and continues to rise. In contrast, all drug overdose deaths in 2021 were just over 106,000, making synthetic opioids, again, primarily fentanyl deaths, the significant major cause of overdose deaths in the United States. Although Mexico and India both manufacture materials used in making fentanyl, a House Select Committee tasked with uncovering all this information found, quote, Companies in China produce nearly all of the illicit fentanyl precursors, key ingredients that drive the global illicit fentanyl trade. Precursors, just for clarification, are chemicals used in the synthesis of fentanyl. So some may be a combination of drugs, some may be specific ingredients just to allow the process to happen. But in any situation, these drugs we know are, can be used for the purpose of developing fentanyl. Now, there's some reasons why all of these ingredients are being produced and sent from China, part of which actually is a legal and legitimate reason to manufacture fentanyl as medical companies seek it out for pain relief. However, China also subsidizes the manufacturing and ex exporting of these precursors through tax rebates, unconcerned if they're for a contract or even legal purposes, according to the select committee's findings, which is a program that is not disclosed by the CCP. In other words, they're hiding it. There's lots more discovered that China does in this committee's report, from monetary grants being given to companies who traffic the materials, some of which serve no other purpose than to make fentanyl. They hold interests also in companies who traffic these ingredients. They don't prosecute against those found in doing all this illegally. Through undercover agents, they even found open selling of these ingredients via the web some of which, to be fair, was in the dark web. The internet in China is even censored to keep out keywords such as local illegal drug sales, but doesn't do that same thing for calls to their internet from outside the country, so we can find those illegal drug sales. And there's evidence of tons of money laundering directly related to fentanyl drug traffickers and criminal organizations in China. Okay. So what can we do about all of this? Well, this seems like one of those few magic moments where a bipartisan effort could actually take place. Will it though? It might look too good for Joe Biden and it gets squashed for that reason. But I seriously hope not. 
In the Select Committee's report, they suggest a few things. A joint task force designed to disrupt this fentanyl supply chain, enhance intelligent officials' ability to essentially help the international community find where this stuff is coming from, and follow the money laundering trail, as well as enhancing local law enforcement to track this all down locally. Increase U.S. sanctions against those involved in the fentanyl trade, and then a few more things to try and bolster customs as well as close money, money laundering options within the United States banking system. What you won't see in that list is a direct call out towards China saying that we'll say like not purchase as much Chinese manufactured goods, which we probably couldn't afford to do anyways. And we hopefully won't to go and hopefully we won't go to war over this because a war with China will hurt and kill a lot more U.S. citizens than fentanyl does which is a sad but true comparison. I'm also hopeful that by bolstering the law enforcement side of things, we aren't talking about cracking down on individual users so much as we're saying, hey, let's give law enforcement the tools to help save lives, like making sure everyone's got Nalazone, a drug that stops the effects of opioids nearly immediately and restores people's ability to breathe. Also, addiction aids for folks and, and maybe some more uh, programs or, or interactions with the community. This is where I think we'll see more of the partisanship get into this solution. If we go after the manufacturers, though, and the criminal organizations trafficking this stuff in, that, I think, is just good. It may mean we'll upset China some, and that'll still hurt the U.S. economy some, but they need us as well for now, so that should be limited. We also have the ability, because we've got lots of money, we could actually offset some of that economic hurt for some time on the effects of U.S. citizens if we made such a decision, like we partially did during COVID, or like we should be doing to offset inflation's costs. That's a high hope of mine personally. Or we could just restart the multi-decade war on drugs that, you know, works so well, costs so little. Or we could model ourselves after the Prohibition, which, you know, another big success story in the U.S. that most certainly didn't create criminal organizations. Not a one. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.